Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring Live, and today is Wednesday, June 16th, 2021, and we are in the final hour of the trading day, and wow, what a final hour or what a day it's been so far. Um, as you know, I mention this each day, but the final hour of trading is my favorite time to make the majority of my buying and selling decisions because during the day you have the day traders and the algorithms. They are the ones in, the, in control of the price. At the end of the day, the large financial institutions come in, take control away from the day traders and the algorithms, and they move the price because of their buying power. I consider them to be the smartest money on the street, and therefore I consider them uh, I consider following what the large financial institutions do as far as making your buying and selling decisions a good and solid edge in the long term in your trading. So thank you all for coming today. I appreciate you being here. It's always nice to see everyone. I hope you're having a nice day. I hope you're having a uh, safe day in the market today with all of this volatility. The last few days, we have not had much volatility. Uh, I was mentioning earlier today to Gary and uh, uh, some other people that uh, this was like watching paint dry. And Gary said, well, after the FMOC announcement, the paint will uh, not have to dry anymore or uh, whatever he said, but essentially things would shake up and boy, did they ever. So, um, all right. Well, listen, uh, the currently the Dow is down 270 points, down 0.79%. The NASDAQ is down 93.29, down 0.66%. And the S&P is down 27 points, down 0.64%. So it's been a wild, volatile day. Uh, sure, it will have an impact on the market. That announcement have an impact on the market going forward. So here is the plan for today. First of all, we are going to run the U.S. legal disclaimer. Secondly, I'm going to come back. We're going to take a look at my current positions, talk about when I bought them, why I bought them, and how I'm going to manage them going uh, going forward. Uh, after that, we're going to go over to the board, take a look at my students' positions, and uh, we're going to see, go through each one of those one by one and see how those are doing. I do so, see some green over there, thankfully. And after that, we're going to talk about trader psychology, always my most favorite part of the day. Uh, trading is psychology, really, when it gets down to it. I, I mentioned this yesterday in uh, the psychology section, but really when it comes down to it, trading is psychology. It's, it's yes, you have your entries, your exits, all that kind of stuff, but your entries and exits and your profit targets, all those things are essentially going to stem from your thinking and therefore trading as psychology. So I'm gonna concentrate on that. Hopefully we'll learn something good. Um, after that, I have gone down through my watch list. I have gone down through the results of Kamal Scanner. I have three requirements whenever I'm looking to enter a new trade. First, confluence combination of indicators lining up on multiple time frames. Second, I need to have a good risk to reward ratio. Um, of at least two to one uh, with a strong support below me compared to strong and likely resistance above me uh, for my reward section. And it has to be at least two to one, three to one, four to one, even better, but you have to have that ratio to make the math work for profitable trading. And then number three, please make sure you always have some type of complete plan when you hit that buy button. Measure the volatility. Know how many shares you're gonna buy based on the volatility. Know where your emergency stop's gonna be. Know where your end of day stop's gonna be. Know where your intraday profit targets are gonna be. Know where your overhead, significant overhead resistance levels are gonna be. And have a trailing stop methodology in place as well. All right, so with those three requirements, I do have some potential end of day trades that I'm going to be going through as we get closer to the close of the market. We'll look at the different time frames. We'll look at the risk to reward ratios. And uh, if I find something good, uh, I will buy it right before the close of the market. Um, after the market closes, if you have any questions for me, please let me know. If you have any stock symbols that you would like me to look at prior to the close, uh, put, put them in the live stream. I'll do my very best to get to them before the close of the market. And then lastly, if any of my students have any new entries or exits for me today, if you can, please wait till after the market closes before letting me know about them. And um, um, so the market's closed. I'm done teaching, I'm done trading, pressure's off, and then I'll spend as much time as we need to get those all updated, okay? So I'm gonna run the US legal disclaimer. I'll be back in 40 seconds, thank you.
This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. Okay, I have my microphone on. I do. Let's see who is here today. Uh, Johnson is first up. Good to see you, Johnson. Hope you're having a good day, my friend. Hello, Greg. Hello, everyone. Exciting hour in the market. No doubt about that. Uh, good to see you, Johnson. Steve Burns is here. Good to see you, Steve. Hope you are having a good day, my friend. Appreciate everything you do for this channel. Hope you, Holly, and the dogs are all doing well. Steve says, hello, traders. Happy FOMO. Uh, oh, could be FOMO day too, right? But happy FOMC, my cursor was over that word. So hello traders, happy FOMC day. Yeah, what a crazy day. Paxton is here, good to see you, Packy. Hope you are doing well. Um, Michael Williams is here, love it. Nice to see you, my friend. Timothy is here, good to see you, Tim. Hope you're doing well. Tim, you and I need a Skype call. We need to catch up on some uh, NBA and on life. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Frank is here. Nice to see you, Frank. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for everything that you do for this channel, Frank, with your wonderful, beautiful poems. I was talking, uh, someone mentioned that to me on the phone yesterday about your poems. I'm like, I know they're outstanding. Uh, David is here. Nice to see you, David. Hope you are doing well and the family is doing well. Uh, Michael is here, Miko25. Good afternoon, Greg and all. Good to see you, Mike. Kamal is here. Hey, my friend, what's going on? Good to see you. Thank you for everything that you do for this channel as well, Kamal. Um, hope you're having a good day and thank you as always for your friendship. Uh, Jonathan is here from Ireland. Evening, Greg and group. Nice to see you, Jonathan. Hope you are doing well. Kamal says, Baba may do a false breakout to the downside with the V1 today. Ooh, I didn't see that. Let me... Uh, why is that not working? Okay, that's not working. Uh, what's going on? What is happening, everybody? Oh, I see. Ah, my keyboard. Or my... Let's see. Sorry. Oh, well, that's great. Um, my keyboard has malfunction, or my, well, I'm gonna have to do it that way, I suppose. Um, sorry about that. Uh, Baba, let's see. Oh, it's probably at a battery. I'll bet you that's what it was. Oh, I see. Yeah, up against that big bar, that's what concerns me a little bit. Kamal, Timothy said, would love that. Great, let's do it. Steve says, Beyond Meat is a nice example of 200-day SMA support. Oh, man, I'm going to be way off on this podcast without that thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is good. Um, ba -ba -ba, Jazz Sushi is here. Nice. Good to see you, Jazz. Hello, sir. Hello right back to you. Appreciate you being here. Kamal wants to look at FAS. Uh, that's pretty interesting. False breakout to the downside. V1 rejection of the 50. Um, looks pretty good, actually. Not too bad. Timothy says, does DISCA have a double bottom? DISCA. Yeah, it does. It actually looks pretty good, Tim. 
A lot of sideways motion there. False breakouts at the downside in the V1. I actually quite like that. I'm gonna put that on the. Um, I'm gonna put that on the list here. A while ago, nothing looked good, and now things are starting to look good. And let me do a little math on that. Oh man, math is gonna be tough without that keyboard thing. 2.12. Okay, D I S C A. Oh. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be a challenge today, everybody. I'm going to be a little slower today for sure without my little external keyboard thing. Uh, that looks good though, Tim. I do, I do quite like that. Ava is here. Hi, Ava. Good to see you. Thank you for all your contributions today in uh, our in the other little Skype group there. Nice to have you there, Ava. Uh, let's take a look. All right. Okay. Get rid of this. Sorry, have a lot going on here. You think I should replace the battery? Okay, I'm gonna replace the battery. Hang on. Well, let's see if these batteries are gonna work. And then also I have to see whether or not, sometimes I have to resync this and, yeah, it's not gonna work. Gosh darn it. Sorry, everybody. All right. I'm gonna try, here we go. Let's see if it works. <clears throat> All right, let's try. Boom. Yes, I got it. All right, thanks, Kamal. Good advice, bud, as usual, as usual. Okay. Lilia is here. Good to see you, Lilia. Hope you're doing well. All right, here we go. Let's get through. I've got that back up. Okay, chug. CHGG, I did buy CHGG with a double bottom bullish divergence, bullish engulfing bar, V1, bought it at 74.64, moved up nicely, up, 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 took profits, rejected the 50 RSI, I sold half yesterday, I sold with a close below the previous day's low, uh, have a quarter position left, did hit one profit target today earlier at 75.53. And so far from entry to exit, this trade is up 2.94%. CMG, David, Kamal, Jonathan, and I did buy CMG. Nice entry here with rejection of the 250-day moving average in the V1, bought at 1343.05. Moved up nicely, took some significant profits. Moved 1.5 ATRs from my entry, then had a close below the previous day's low after reaching the 1.5 ATR trailing stop level. Took half off yesterday at the close. Today was much lower, but has recovered this particular trade at this moment. Oops. Is up 2.08%. So happy for that. MSTR has been a great trade for Gary, Tristan Paxi, Jonathan, and myself. Bought this with a deep dip buy with the rejection of the 200-day moving average. Bought it at 459.21. Moved up like a champion. 
moved way above 1.5 ATR trailing stop level, up, 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 made a little note to myself. We did reach a 65 RSI today near the high. So now the 5 EMA comes into play. If I lose the 5 EMA, if we close below the 5 EMA, I will get out of the entire trade. Alternatively, if it keeps moving up, I will keep taking profits and look for a rejection of the 70 RSI. But so far, this particular trade, it's been a great one. Uh, up 25.33%. Uh, SCCO, Steve, Gary, Miko, oh, 520 cross, why did I put that in there? And Jonathan and I did buy this yesterday, SCCO, with a bounce, intraday rejection of the 200-day moving average and a rejection of the negative third ATR channel, is down 1.27% today and down about that much on the trade. Looks like right now, anyway, that it will lose the 200-day moving average, so I will get out. But that's the key point about buying at strong resistance, uh, support, excuse me, like the 200-day moving average in at 62.99 at 62.36. So it's down, you know, I don't know, 60-something cents on that. But if it closes below the 200, I will just get out, take a loss. But that's the key, having a good risk-to-reward ratio. If I was right, potentially could be right all the way back up here to like $70. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong small. And that's the key to profitable trading. So very likely I will be having to take a loss on this one today, but that's okay. Uh, I'll just wait till the end of the day. Spy, all right. Uh, another overnight spy trade profitable, not a big one, my gosh. Bought this at 424.48 yesterday at the close, sold it this morning at the open at 424.61 for a little gain. So the last few days have all been profitable, but increment, very small increments of profits. Of course, we've had some increase in volatility here today. So as always, I will buy this buy at the close. I'll hold it overnight and I'll sell it at first thing the next morning. TER. All right, this is kind of a complicated trade. I took it with the 520 crossover, did uh, move up, move up, 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 got to 1.5 ATR trailing stop levels, therefore I go into trailing stop mode, sold half here for a profit at 128.41, moved up, took some more profits, had a big down bar that closed below both the five and the 20 EMA. Those are the two EMAs that I used to take the trade, therefore that was a warning sign, I got out of half. Then we had another bit of a leg up, 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 up. Um, today opened higher, did hit one profit target at 132.07 um, and then sold off. But anyway, up on this trade, um, hard to say how much because of all the, uh, the exits and the trailing stops, but definitely up on the trade for sure. And really glad that I hit that profit target near the top today. My, my end of day stop on this particular trade will be a five crossing below the 20. Uh, Twitter. All right. Twitter has been an excellent trade. Uh, I've had a deep dip buy down here on Twitter all the way down at 52.58 with a uh, intraday re or close under and close over the 200. Moved up nicely, moved 1.5 ATRs for my entry point, then had a close below the previous day's low. I saw I sold half, locked in, locked in half profits, continued to s scale out as it moved up, 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 did hit one profit target today again near the high at 63.01, so continuing to take profits off the table. This particular trade up 12.52%. XLU, well, this was a good trade, but it turned into a bad one because of the FMOC today with interest rates. Lily and I did buy XLU with a 520 crossover, bought it at 65.95. This is a good example of why I like to scale out when I have profits, because if I get a big down bar like I do today, I have locked in profits at higher levels and it minimizes the loss. So bought at 65.95, did hit one profit target near the high today, luckily at 66.77 before we had the big sell-off. I took this trade because of the 520 crossover. It looks likely we're gonna close below the, both the five and the 20 so therefore that is a warning sign i will take off half i will get out of the entire trade when the five crosses below the 20. uh had a really nice trade day trade today on cues i didn't think i'd have any trades but we had you know we moved sideways we had the announcement we came back down this was kind of a zone type of trade you know as you know if you have a big down bar very likely when you get to 50 percent 
you're going to have that 50% retracement and then sell off. Maybe, but my risk to reward was good. So I shorted here at 340.28. Uh, oh, that was the next bar. The next bar, I took half profits on my short at 339.42. Then we had another serious down bar. Uh, I was fortunate enough just to take it all off there. I knew these kind of days could be volatile. So I shorted at 340.28, covered half at 339.42, covered the other half at 338.29. So nice big move and uh, very grateful that I covered my short because now we're heading back up. Okay, so let's take a look at your trades everyone gpn all right this is tracy and paxton tracy and paxton bought gpn yesterday with the close under close back over the 200 day moving average uh today it is down 0.81 percent uh so it is down on the day down on the trade and it looks like it's closing below 200 at least right now who knows alibaba green i have kamal and uh, J uh jonathan in alibaba uh with this um uh, v2 that happened back on the 14th bought it at 213.87 i was in this trade as well i did get stopped out yesterday with a close below the halfway of the washout bar was down earlier but now it's turned back a little bit positive so good for kamal and jonathan so it is up on the day and a little bit down on the trade airbnb uh johan gary took and kamal took airbnb i think gary took i can't remember now who did what but somebody bought it 143.20 i think someone else bought it around 145.92 it is down a little bit on the day but it's still up on the trade for johan gary and kamal so good to see that fisv tracy and paxton uh like this trade yesterday uh, good risk to reward ratio off the 250 day. Tracy and Paxton bought it at 109.78. It's currently 108.53. It is down 1% uh, today, 1.08%, and it is actually down on the trade. And it looks like it's going to close below the 250 day moving average as well. Amazon. Steve bought Amazon with the 10.30 EMA crossover. Bought this here at 33.44.42. It's at 34.14.94, up 0.92% today. So up on the day and up 2.06% on the trade. Shopify. Wow. Kamal with a huge day on Shopify. Shop, uh, Kamal bought this nice return to value bullish engulfing bar V1 at 1231 and this has been a monster up 3.96 percent just today and this particular trade up over 10 percent 10.55 percent so congratulations come on ely callaway golf frank bought this all the way back here at 2775 it is currently 34.67, up 0.61% on the day, and up 20, over 20.31% 20 on the trade. Very got, nice. Match.com, Tracy and Paxton bought Match.com with a bounce of the 200-day moving average, bought it here at 137.90. Uh, they did sell half up here. It's up one, it's up 0.84% today. And it is also up about 4.14% on the trade. So very nice. PKI, nice day for Steve and David. They bought it with the 520 cross. They bought PKI at 146.10. It's currently 148.61. So it's up 0.39% on the day. And it is up 1.7% on the trade. Pins. <clears throat> Steve bought pins. With the 520 EMA crossover, 6807 at 6936. It is down 1.67% today, but it is up 1.93% on the trade. Uber, Gary bought Uber, um, bu 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 and Kamal bought Uber. I think Gary bought this at 84, uh, 4820. I think Kamal bought it here about. 49.58 it is down 0.79 percent on the day so it looks like gary is still up on the trade i believe kamal a little down on the trade i could be wrong but 
that's that's my guess and then Lilia and Jonathan have nice trade here on Bristol Myers Squibb BMY bought this with this nice return to value false breakout to the downside v1 bought this at 65.36 it's 67.22 it is down 0.3 percent but Lilia and Jonathan looks like they are up 2.72 percent so far on the trade so very very nice um Okay, Timothy says LB has a 520 crossover. Don't see the 520 crossover there, Tim. It has a false breakout to the downside in a V1. I do see that, but I don't see the 520 crossover. That one looks pretty good actually. Yeah, that, that looks like a pretty decent trade, although it looks like it rejected the 50 RSI, which is a little little bit concerning. Steve says, SQSP, Squarespace, IPO, first day with a 520, 520 crossover. I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to pull that one up. Oh, no, I can. Yep, I can pull it up. I just don't have the indicators on there, but Steve says it has a 520 crossover. Steve says big spike on the US dollar up over the, yeah, I would imagine. Let's look at the UUP, which is the dollar. Yes, big day. Wow, big day. Strong dollar, not so great though uh, for the market in general, but yeah, so I guess oh, oh, uh, uh, gold probably had the reverse. Gary wants to look at FAS. Looks pretty good. False breakout to the downside, bullish engulfing bar, rejection of the 50. Uh, yes, that, that looks pretty good as well. Uh, Gary says, I, I'm in Baba 143, I think Kamal bought lower. Okay, so I got those mixed up. Uh, Michael says, Kamal, doing really well with the Shopify, way to go. Tim says, way to go. Johnson says, Chewy. It's a V2. It is a V2, Johnson, but it's not enough of a washout. We would need yesterday's bar to go below day one's bar by a lot more than that. So I don't consider that a valid V2. It is above 50. You are correct on the weekly support of the 50 SMA. Yes. Yeah, it's not, not too bad. I just don't see a clear signal, you know, the way that I trade. Um... Let's see, 143.05. Okay, Gary, maybe maybe we can, at the end of the day, get this these entry points figured out for Baba. Uh, you're at, in 143? So I'm way off there. Maybe we can clear that up after. Um, Johnson says, come on, you might like CTSH similar to Baba. Okay, today's poem brought to you by Frank. I am looking forward to this. I am always looking forward to those. Let's take a look here. Let me paste that in there. All right, I'm excited. Here we go. Frank says, trade like a total bore. Waiting can bring setups that can refresh and restore. Stocks need time before they move to the fore. Find the right stocks and you'll make so much more. That's <laughs> so good. Trade like a total bore. Trading should be boring, everybody. It really should. That first uh, sentence of that poem is totally correct. Trade like a boar. Waiting can bring setups that can refresh and restore. That sounds nice, right? Refresh and restore. Sounds good. Stocks need time before they move to the fore. Find the right stock and you'll make so much more. Unbelievable. Just really fantastic, Frank. Thank you so much. And, and so on point. 
it's so pertinent to trading. I mean, it's just, it's just great. Thank you so much, Frank. All right, let's take a little gander over here. All right. Well, listen, before we start to look for our potential at the end of day uh, setups, um, I just want to talk a little bit about trader psychology. I like this as kind of a, a twofer um, as far as uh, the post today and uh, two of uh, uh, channels on Twitter that I really follow and I really admire both of these. First one is Anthony Crudell at Anthony Crudell. Great channel over there trading coach, futures trader, and then Denise Scholl. And uh, you've heard me talk about Denise before. Denise is an author and uh, works with different groups, pro athletes, traders, hedge funds, working on trader psychology. She wrote a great book called Market Mind Games. I remember driving up to Idaho and listening to that audio books, fantastic. Um, so, you know, these are two uh, really great channels. I would, I would um, suggest subscribing to both Anthony Crudell at Anthony Crudell on Twitter and Denise Scholl at Denise K. Scholl. Uh, I think it'll be worth your while to follow their post and informative. Uh, but the first one on deck here from Anthony, the more times you're in a situation, the better you become with handling it. And in my experience, this is the only way we can control in quotes, emotions in trading, but that's not really control. It's experience in dealing with situations. That makes sense. The more times you're in a situation, the better you become with handling it. And in my experience, this is the only way we can control emotions in trading, but it's not really that you're controlling emotions. It's experience in dealing with situations. So, um, you're not controlling things. You just have more experience. You have more reps in dealing with certain situations in this regards into trading that it, it gives you the feeling of that you're in more control. I mean, you know, semantics here, right? But uh, uh, if you have more control, you have more control because you're more experienced with the situation and, and you're more relaxed and you can handle it better. And then Denise underneath here says, it's actually the emotion of confidence that evolved little by little. It's like this with everything we have. It's like this with everything we have any amount of confidence in, we move from the emotion of concern to confidence. It's actually the emotion of confidence that's evolved little by little. Little. It's like this with everything we have any amount of confidence in. We move from the emotion of concern to confidence. So you can see both of these sayings are basically saying the more conf the more repetition you have, the more experience, the more confidence you have, and the better you'll be in control of the situation. So what's the takeaway? The takeaway for me is you have to have reps in whatever you do. You have to have experience. You've heard me talk about this many times, but the only way you're going to be become a better trader, uh, it, it, you know, increase, increasing your trading skills to a higher, higher level is to have repetition. And by doing it hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of times, running into situations where you're more confident if you run into them again in the future. But the main thing is if you position size too large, if you stay on the wrong side of the trade, if you, if you let those winners, uh, if you cut those losers too short, if you let those winners run, you will blow up your account and therefore you have no more chips to play and therefore you will not have experience and therefore you won't get good. So the real takeaway here, everybody position size correctly, cut those losses quickly, let those winners run and get as much experience and keep your account together and get as much experience as you can. And with experience, you're going to have more confidence and competence in your trading. So again, Anthony Crudell, or um, excuse me, at Anthony Crudell and at Denise K. Scholl. And by the way, um, Take a look on Amazon or Audible and look up Denise's book, Market Mind Gains. Really interesting. Talks a lot about how you were raised, the interactions that you had with your parents and uh, the psychology behind that as far as what kind of trader you're, you're going to become later in life. Of course, we're shaped 
by our younger years and that translates and carries through to trading but her book is called the market mind games i highly i highly recommend it so thank you anthony and denise Okay, that was a water, not a beer. Kamal is the shop king. Of course he is the shop king. Everybody knows that. <laughs> he is without a doubt the undisputed heavyweight title holder of trading Shopify. Way to, way to go, Kamal. Uh, Gary says, Kamal, finger, fingers wrote Baba but meant A, B, and B. Senior moment. Okay. Thank you. That makes me feel a lot better because I wasn't even within $100 on the symbol. <laughs> so maybe if you could update me again at the end there, Gary, and we'll get those all straightened out. Frank says, thank you, uh, Greg, Kamal, and Dan. Steve says, to add on to your post, you must develop faith in your system and faith in yourself to follow it with discipline. Oh, 100% true. That's why it's tough for new traders and somebody teaches them a new, a new approach. Maybe the person teaching them has a lot of confidence in it, but do you have a lot of confidence in it? Probably not if you haven't used it. So yes, what Steve's saying is the more you use your approaches, the more confidence you get. You know, I was reading a book, I can't remember who it was. Um, they, they owned a hedge fund. I think one of their young daughters came in and wanted to become a trader and the, and the dad said, great, fine. Made the daughter sit down watch one minute charts for like a month straight. Not real trading, but just watching the repetitive patterns repeat themselves quickly because it's a one minute chart. And why did he do that? He wanted, well, probably for a couple of reasons. Two, one, so that she could see how these patterns repeat quickly. And two, that would give her confidence in that a certain pattern, if she saw that over and over and over during the day and for like a month's time, um, to give her confidence. So yes, Steve's a hundred percent true, uh, a hundred percent, hundred percent correct on that. To add on to your post, you must develop faith in your system and faith in yourself to follow with discipline. Yeah. You have to have faith in yourself. You have faith, have to have faith in your, dis, in your, um, in your system and faith in yourself, uh, so that you can really follow it. And that's the key. That's the key. So, um, great, Steve. Thank you, my friend. That's excellent. All right, well, before we start looking at new trades, let me check back on current trades here. Uh, Chug, up on the day, profit target, uh, no issues with that. I don't see any changes there. CMG, doing great, back above the 200-day moving average, up on the day, very glad to see that as well. MicroStrategy has been a wonderful, beautiful trade, down a little bit today, but has not hit any of my trailing stop levels. Uh, SC, SCCO, uh, looks like I will have to exit this with a small loss if it closes below the 200-day moving average. Overnight SPY trade, small little up day on this. I will be buying this at the close today. TER, um, profitable, uh, down a little bit today. Um, I don't see anything I have to change there as well. Twitter, totally fine on that trade. That's up nicely, but down a little bit today. And then XLU, looks like the only change I'm gonna to have to make in XLU today uh, is selling half of my XLU position because of the close below both the five and the 20 after the 520 already happened. Uh, so that should take care of that. Look at VIX today, unreal everybody. Had a huge update, gave it all the way back. Unbelievable. And then of course had the good short trade on uh, the Qs today. So. Um, tell you what, give me about 40 seconds. I think I have to grab some other batteries. I am so sorry. It's been a while since I've changed these batteries. So if you could just bear with me and uh, talk amongst yourself and uh, give me about 40 seconds. Thanks.
Okay, okay, okay. Back, back, back. Let me put on my lucky, my lucky ball cap so that we've finished strong into the day. CMG finishing strong, that's for sure. That's great. That's really good. Um, okay. Well, let's take a look at some potentials today. Uh, Bitcoin, let's look at Bitcoin real quick for funsies. We had the close under, close over the 200 day moving average. I did have a nice trade on Bitcoin, did get out, waiting for a pullback on this particular chart and retested that 200, a higher low retested that 200 would, with a good risk to reward ratio, with a good intraday rejection or close under, close back over would make a lot of sense to me, but it is down 2.68% today. Match.com does have a 520 crossover, uh, does back test well, so that is definitely a potential today with the 520 crossover, although we have had a lot of issues with the 50 SMA. Rejection, 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 rejection. But the more times it tests something, um, you know, it's either gonna go down or it's eventually gonna break back up and change the other direction. So I'm a little concerned with the rejection of the 50, but MACD is positive. We're still above 50 RSI. So it's, it's a potential. CNK, Cinemark Holdings has a return to value, false breakout to the downside, has a nice V1 above the 50 RSI at the moment. Uh, so this one looks decent. Let's look at the weekly. Weekly is holding the 50 RSI. It's above the 510, the 100. Uh, this looks uh, decent as well. And it's up today. It's bucking the trend up 2.58%. TRUE uh, earlier was a false breakout to the downside in a V1. I don't see that uh, being the case anymore. Uh, Lava, Michael pointed this out. Looks pretty, it looks okay. Actually, this is uh, Nordstrom, have a false breakout to the downside, uh, bullish engulfing bar V1 back in the value zone. Um, I'd like it better if we had a double bottom with the bullish divergence. Let's look over on the weekly. Weekly, so this is the thing, I didn't mention this, Love but when I looked at this, the first thing I saw was this big down bar on the weekly about a month ago. We had a big down bar larger than one ATR. Uh, we did rally up to 50% of that and fail. So for that reason, uh, I am going to take that one off the board. ALK, Alaska Airlines Group. Airlines have been struggling. I don't see anything on ALK. Alibaba, Kamal and Jonathan have this up five cents today, which is good, but I don't see a new trade there for me. Beyond Meat, Steve mentioned this, we are holding support at the 200 day moving average. Oh, hey, way to go. CMG just hit a profit target, yay, up 0.89%, so that's fantastic. All right, you know my profit targets, favorite part of the day. Uh, I don't see a new trade on Beyond Meat. Uh, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, it's up today, it's good. You know, it's consolidating here, but I don't see an entry trigger. DISCA, Discovery, I can't remember. Uh, oh, that was, uh, that was uh, Tim that mentioned that. That is a night's nice false breakout to the downside and a V1, MACD is positive. Did we go under 30, over 30? We may have, let's take a little look-see. Uh, yeah, looks like we went under 30, over 30, false breakout to the downside. The previous bar here is a little concerning. It's larger than one ATR. And uh, I think we have some more upside on this, but I bet you we get stopped out probably about 30 cents higher. So I don't see a good risk to reward on that the closer I look at it. iRobot has a close back above the 200 day moving average, but it hasn't really respected it under, over, under, over. I mean, it could be decent. It is up on it, up today. It is consolidating on the weekly, holding the 50 EMA and the 50 SMA. Um, don't really see anything here I like though. Home, it's very strong, 520 crossover, a little bit of a V1 back in the value zone, but this looks too chasey to me. VRM, uh, uh, recovered pretty nicely from yesterday's big down move. Did hit an emergency stop on this one yesterday, uh, but we are right to about halfway of yesterday's bar. 
Um, I would be more inclined to be looking for a short on this than going long. Vips, under 30, over 30, while MACD is positive, plenty of shares traded, holding support at the 100 day moving average. Um, it's okay, but I don't think it's anything I'd be interested in. BT, BD, TX, consolidating here after a big move down. MACD is positive. You know, maybe if we have a V2 tomorrow, uh, get us back over the 30 RSI. I think uh, either Lilia or Ava pointed this one out, but I think this one's a little premature, but if we could get back over the 30 tomorrow, we'd probably also have a V2, it would be a confluence of indicators. STNE, don't really see anything there. Keys, I think Ava pointed this out. A uh, little high for me up here at the 61 RSI level. Uh, would uh, uh, Did trigger a fractal, triggered this fractal here, high with two lower highs to the left, two lower highs to the right, and triggered the fractal, but I don't see a clear setup there. WAB, don't really see anything there either. UAL. Lower low V2, back above the 50, it is up on the day. Weekly in the value zone. I don't know, I have a feeling airlines are gonna bounce. We've had this big move down. We're starting to at least catch a little bit of a bottom, but I don't see, I don't see a clear signal there yet. Here is love, this is Southwest Airlines. Same thing, really has just gone down and down and down and down and down and down and down. I don't see a clear signal there. MAR Marriott, this could, this could be a really nice V1 or V2 because we've had the sideways motion, we have the false breakout to the downside, but we do not have a trigger. Boeing, um, Kamal and I were talking about this earlier, we're way above value. Again, this is why I don't like to buy above value. I like to wait for it to come back into value. I wanna buy in value, sell when it's above value. I don't wanna buy above value and have my stop hip right when I'm back in value. Uh, this is a washout bar today. This is actually probably a good thing. If we could reverse back up, get a V2 from here, I would definitely take it, but not right this moment. And I think that's it. So match.com with the 520 is okay. Um, I think the smart move on this is just to wait for it to go above the 50. And then CNK, oh, this is gonna be a close one because it is a return to value. It is a false breakout to the downside. It's 50.05. So for me, CNK is what I'm gonna be looking at today if and only if we close above the 50 RSI. Right now it's 49.99. So we have about 11 minutes to go. Uh, there's something I had to do. Yeah. XLU. I'm going to sell half of my XLU right now because very likely that's going to close below the 20. So let me sell half of that. Oh, that's too much math for me to do. <clears throat> okay. Three, six. Okay, so I did sell half of my XLU because of the price closing below both the five and the 20. Big down bar day anyway, so it does kind of make sense. And everything else is fine. Chug's fine, CMG did just nail that profit target, which is good. My, uh, micro strategies come, came back quite a bit. Oh, SCCO, looks like SCCO is gonna close below. Let me make myself a note of this in big letters, sell SCCO. But, you know, 
we have nine minutes it could creep back above the 200 if we have a little end of day kind of situation going on but not sure and then Cinemark Holdings, I'm not going to buy this unless it closes above the 50 RSI. If I was in this and it rejected the 50 RSI, I would sell half. So if I, if I would sell half, why would I initiate a position? Do you see what I mean? Uh, VIX has come back. Into positive mode again. Oh, we get a fortune cookie. This is going to be good. Frank says, fortune cookie says, those who have claimed to a clean conscious have probably never used it. <laughs> fortune cookie says, those who claim to have a clean conscious have probably never used it. That is probably 100% agree. Michael says, I agree. I missed that bar on the weekly. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're talking about uh, whatever that one was. I can't remember. Now I can't remember. Um, Glenn, good to see you, Glenn. Hope you're doing well. Glenn says, CNK is sitting right on the daily pivot at 22.54. Yeah, it's it just seems like it's right there. Now it's rejected that 50, so unless it closes above, I'm not interested in that. Bears need to close below 42.12.80 on the S&P 500. Well, let's look at the S&P 500. 42.18, oh, 18. So we're at 42.31, so we are holding that. Look at that, came right back into the value zone. We have rallied, but if you look at the high and the low, we are right back slightly above 50%. I don't know. Um, you know, something happened today in this market, clearly, uh, with, with the MOC announcement. Um, yeah, I'm going to be a little cautious. Speaking of VIX, why don't we look at VIX? Well, it could be a little chasey here. VIX is a wild one. Lots of volume on the VIX, though, I tell you that. Okay, and then over here. All right. CNK is getting very close. So that 50 RSI, if we have it, I will do it. I already sold half of XLU. CMG cranking up there, which is great. <clears throat> Steve is long SQSP on the 520 day EMA crossover at 59.76. So Steve did by SQSP on the 520 day EMA crossover. Frank says, no trades. I must run off to do a Greg Gossett style good deed. Fantastic, way to go. Let us know tomorrow what it was. Ava says, shippers sector have been very strong. NMM is not extended. Thoughts?
Well, I'm glad we were able to overcome the 50. I'm glad we were able to overcome two days ago with the large down bar. It's okay, Ava. Um, has the 520 crossover. Lots of volume today. That one might run. Just make sure you pick a good trailing stop level. I would use maybe, you know, if the 5 crossed under the 20 or alternatively halfway of the washout bar here. But if we look at the weekly, I mean, we could go back up and test those highs. I generally don't like to buy anything over the one ATR channel with the exception of a 520 crossover or another type of crossover. It, it's okay. We have rejected the previous high though, Ava. Um, it'd be nice if it could close over that range, I guess is what I'm saying. David says, Steve, on SQSP without ATRs, how do you decide the size of your position? I imagine Steve would just use a 10%, not sure. Um, maybe I can let Steve answer that one. You know what I've been looking at recently has been Caterpillar. I'm looking for an under, uh, back over the two, uh, uh, the 30 RSI down today. We've had a 10% correction. We are starting to find a little bit of buyers here. Hopefully we make bounce from here, but I'm looking for an entry. Nothing today, but I am definitely looking for an entry on that. Uh, the Qs, interestingly enough, it's Looks like we have a close below the previous day's low. The 5 EMA is at 3, 341.06. We're at 340.92. So this is in a little bit of a danger here. We went over 70 or very close to it. So we're under the negative third ATR cha channel. Looks like we have a close below the previous day's low and looks like we're losing the 5 EMA as well. Um, okay. CNK, yeah, so no new trades for me today except for the overnight spy trade. Although I guess I could be prepared to buy CNK if. We do close above the 50. Market closed without me. How rude. Okay, didn't close above anyway. All right, so let's see where I bought today. All I bought was the VIX. I mean, not the VIX. All I bought was the overnight spy trade, which feels pretty good. definitely got a discount on that one 422.11 for the overnight spy trade sold half of XLU uh, at unprofitable levels but again that's why I like to scale out because it did mitigate that loss I will get out of the rest if I get a 520 cross under below so all right well shrunk my positions a little bit today glad for the day glad for the nice day trade on the queues um so if any of my students have any new entries or exits for me that they would like me to update on the board if you could just please put them in there now and we'll spend as much time as we need to get them all updated correctly just real quick three quick pieces of business just want to remind everybody that i do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time via skype 
I teach a 15 hour course, just you and I for 15 hours and a lot of a lot, talking a lot about stocks and setups. It's a great course. I know you're going to be a much better trader when you are finished with this course or when you graduate from the course, I should get a little graduation certificate. Uh, but in the course, I teach you all five of the trading approaches that I've been using over the last 25 years. They're really good. I teach you step by step. And when you're done, you're going to be a better trader. I promise you, we cover a lot of ground in this course. It is intensive. It's 15 hours, sometimes longer. So get ready, but uh, you know, think of it as a college course in really learning how to trade. And I do work very hard in these lessons. It's very important to me that my students learn how to trade correctly and that they succeed. Uh, I care a lot about people. I want them to succeed. And uh, of course, it's also you know good for my brand and it's important to me that my students do well. So if you're interested, the course is $1,750. Sounds like a lot of money, but it's good investment in yourself. It's an investment in learning how to really develop a skill. And I think the best way to really do that is one-on-one -on -one, uh, with your teacher or your coach or your mentor. So if you are interested in potentially doing this course with me, just send me an email. The email is in the description of this video. If you do reach out to me, just say, Hey, Greg, this is so-and-so interested in potentially taking your course, I will reply, say, great. Thanks for saying hi. Let's set up a Skype call. Skype calls free. It's just for me to get to know more about you and your trading, your goals, learning about your trading challenges and what you're looking from the course, what you're looking to get out of the course. And then also you, it's a good time for you to ask me any specific questions about the course as well. All right. And then when we're done with the call, all you have to do is think about it as long as you want. If you decide, Hey, I'm going to write Greg back. I want to get started, then do it and we'll get started. We will go and I will work very hard to teach you everything I know about trading. Uh, secondly, I do have an alternative to the one-on-one -on -one course. I do have a great online video course on udemy.com. In that course, I teach you all about the deep dip buying stock trading strategy, which you've seen, right? I mean, we've had the, the micro strategies, we've had Twitter, we've had some really good deep dip by strategies, and that's the course that I teach on udemy.com. It's nine and a half hours, it's 26 videos, it's 15 study guides, and the best part, it's like 12 or $15. It's a really good price. As far as getting a lot for your money, that course will give you a lot for your money. So if you're interested, the link's in the description. And then lastly, if you like today's podcast, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button. It helps to build the channel, helps to keep the channel around, lets YouTube know that there's some um, valuable content here so they'll get out and share it. And there are a lot of people out there that need help with trading. I talk to people all day long almost every day and they just want to be able to find some good trading strategies and consistency that they can put to work. There's so many different trading approaches and philosophies out there, but I think, you know, I'm pretty consistent with what I teach. You see me trade it, you know, for years. And uh, I think if we can get people to this channel, uh, we can help them. And so you can help me help them by just hitting the thumbs up button. Okay, enough of that. Um, Okay, so Steve is long SQSP, SQSP, that square space at 5976, and I don't have enough indicators on here, but I'm going to put in the trade 7976, and that's Steve using the 520 crossover after the uh, uh, on these newer IPOs. Okay, got you there, Steve. All taken care of. Steve says yes. Ten position, ten percent position sizes are almost always safe with stocks. Gary is out of Uber with a small gain and under the 200-day moving average. Okay, good, good trade. Way to follow your rules. Do we have anyone else in Uber? Ah, we have Kamal. If I'm correct, I think Kamal bought here, I think, at around 49.55, Kamal, is that correct? Oh, Kamal is out of Uber, all right. All right, so Uber is off the board. Okay, exited SCCO, yep. 
with the close under the 200 day moving average so I did as well Steve is off the board with SCCO Lily is out of a half of XLK that makes sense same with me boy interesting volatile day also put an order to sell the rest of my BNY, BMY but didn't fill. Might be able to sell after hours. Okay, let me know if you do. Gary says, my 200 SMA of SCCO is at 62.63. And the close looked to be 62.68, so I kept it. Okay. So that's the difference in our think or swim and mine and the adjusting for dividends and all that stuff. But... I, as you can see here, Gary, I have 60, I have 62.83 and you have 62.63, in which case it did close above. So that's good. Just go ahead and keep it and uh, use your charts. That's what's important. Uh, David is out of SCCO. Dave, why don't I have you in here? Did I mistake? Did I miss putting you on here? My apologies, my friend. Sorry about that, bud, but you're out. We got that. All right. All right. You know, David, I have a question for you. I want to ask you on a Skype call. It kind of relates to something that you wouldn't know about. It just dawned on me. So if you if you see a little message for me on 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 Skype, let me know, or maybe you get back to me because I do have a question for you. Miko is out. Okay, so I have Gary keeping it because his chart told him he's above two hundred. Jonathan, um, I still have Jonathan there. What's going on after hours? Vix is up a little bit. Spy is down a little bit. And let's check the Qs. Let's check the Qs and see whether or not they did close under the 5. Yes, they did. It breached the 5 EMA. Closed below the previous day's low. And did we have an over 70, under 70 on that day? I don't think we quite got to 70. We got to 67.04, but we did lose the negative third ATR channel. So, yeah. Look at the volume here today. I mean, is that the beginning of distribution? Could be. Could be. Where did Apple end up on the day? 51 cents, so it did recover. It's Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft is down. All right. Well, Frank brought this up a little while ago, but this is from Martin Cornfield. If we all do one random act of kindness daily, we just might set the world in the right direction. Frank was going off to do a random act of kindness today, and I think we should all get in that mode. I mean, think about it. If we really did one nice thing every day for another human being, it really would make the world a better place. And does the world need a better place? I need to be a better place? I think so. Right. And I think we could really improve on that as well. In addition to doing something nice for a human being, if we could also do something for a, for an animal today, be great. Your dog, your cat, an animal that you come across, you know, give, take them on a little walk, give them a little belly rub, a little scratchy big, give them a little treaty big. You know what I mean? Or just some kind words. I've had animals my whole life. They like kind words, just like humans like kind words. So. You know, if we could do something nice for a human, something nice for an animal, um, it's going to help you as well. And, and maybe one day uh, someone or something will be there to give you a hand if you're having a tough day as well. Dave says, Greg, available anytime you need. Thank you, David. You came to my mind early today. I was like, that David would be the perfect person to ask that. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Well, Bitcoin... 
as you know I do trade Bitcoin uh, it's glad to see that I took profits before this happened uh, but we had this close above the 250 day moving average uh, has moved up nicely we are down today I'm looking I like the confluence of the 250 day moving average being right at the halfway of the big up bar so I would be interested looking at Bitcoin with a rejection of that 250 or a bounce of the 250 uh, this is on the uh, Binance uh, BTC perpetual futures contracts would I trade but on this particular chart I'm looking somewhere at about 37 if you are trading Bitcoin futures over on the CME I would look for a pullback and test of that 200 day moving average uh, different prices different you know different markets here these different type of Bitcoin futures and all these different ones are different prices so you have to kind of use the chart that you're using but on this chart I would look for a pullback to the 200 that would give a good risk to reward ratio because we all know everything is about risk to reward right position sizing and risk to reward that's what it is about all right what is I left that over there. Paxson said, did you get mine? No, Packy, what did we do? Oh, there we go. Sometimes these scroll by a little quick for me and I don't get everything, so please forgive me. Um, GPN, we're out of GPN, Paxton. Yep, good trade. Turn into a losing trade, but it's a good trade because you followed your rules. Oh, and fast, okay. Paxton, you know who I spoke to the other day who called me? Scott Bond. Scott Bond called me, uh, had some funny questions. He said, now I heard you develop sugar-free gum. It's like, no, I did not develop sugar-free gum. I wish I had. <laughs> and then he brought up some D.B. Cooper stuff. It's funny how things get conflated and stories get changed. But anyway, we discussed you and Tracy and, uh, you know, you... Uh, being students of mine and uh, how proud I am of you uh, and Tracy as far as uh, how far you've come with your with your trading and, and learning the approaches and trailing stops and all that kind of stuff Ava says thank you for everything Greg thanks everyone have a wonderful day you as well Ava have a lovely day my friend and uh, great to have you in our group over there and I think you'd be a great addition and uh, have a wonderful day and Gary says have a good day everyone as well thanks Gary appreciate that by the way Gary I am looking at Caterpillar we were talking about insurance and selling puts I am looking at Caterpillar to sell some puts for as well you know I like to sell puts on big large stocks that have gotten hammered I just have to identify the level I'm kind of thinking maybe 185 190 I'll have to look at the deltas and see how those how those look think Paxson says thanks Greg sticking with the plan that's all I can ask my friend stick with the boring plan you may not make a ton of money in the short run but over years you will make a lot of money so you and Tracy please remember that okay Hmm. Cues are down after hours. Love us is thank you, Greg. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that, my friend. Well, it's another hot day here in Utah. Man, I walked yesterday in the mountains. I felt like I was on the moon. It was like over 100 degrees and it was super windy. 
And um, I don't know if it was that enjoyable, to be honest with you. <laughs> it was pretty brutal. Uh, but um, I'm going to go out again today. And so that'll be great. That'll be great. Anyone else have any other questions, anything I can help with, please let me know. Okay. Well, thanks again for coming, everybody. Have a nice rest of your day. Go out, be good, be kind, do something nice for a human, an animal, drive safe, look both ways before you cross the street. Um, maybe get a little exercise or go have a little fun, take a little nap, something good. What did the, okay, so the Dow did end up down 265, NASDAQ down 33 and the S&P down 22. So I appreciate everyone being here as always. And uh, on the way out here, I have to run, uh, I have to run the U.S. legal disclaimer. I know that's everyone's favorite part of the day. So if you want to hang out for that, you are in luck because it's coming on up. But take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your day now. Thanks. Bye. U.S. government required disclaimer. Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice, and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind, which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit no representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.